Hey everybody. So, a little bit of an update here. It's been a while. Um, what is today? January 26th. So, I'm trying to think. It's been, oh, it's been about uh, three weeks, I guess, since hunting season closed here in Tennessee. At least the eastern part of the state. The western side has still had some hunts open. But, uh, been closed here on the eastern side for about three weeks, I guess. Uh, I haven't hunted now in, I guess, six weeks, seven weeks after I cut my finger open. Uh, I just called it quits for the year. It didn't hurt anything because I had, it was a good thing I quit, let me put it that way, because uh, our freezer was completely full. So it was just a good time to call it a season. So. Um, today I'm going around I'm checking trail cameras and just taking inventory of a lot of different things I mean I see I've got a lot of dead pines uh, I got one hanging over a tree stand right now so I need to I need to come pull that tree stand down anyway it's a 20 foot ladder stand and I need to take it down and take it to the house and and check all the connections on it and get every, make sure everything's tight check the straps make sure there's no wear on them or anything so just routine maintenance and things like that this is a good time of year to do that um you know you don't have to deal so much with the ticks it's not it's kind of chilly today uh here it's uh it's kind of mid to upper 30s which is <clears throat> which is kind of chilly for a high here in east tennessee so um but it's a good good opportunity to get out and do this and you don't have to deal with like i said the ticks and snakes if you don't like snakes or whatever so um i'm gonna check trail cameras and See what we've got. Blackberries. So I'm walking down through my pine thicket. And as I've said in other videos during last hunting season, the, the center of the pine thicket here died out many years ago. And it's been replaced by various hardwoods. We got a lot of poplars maples we got a few oaks coming on but the poplars and maples you know they tend to grow so quickly that they grew up and <clears throat> started crowding out some of the oaks so i came in back last fall and cut out some areas when i found some oaks so that way it allowed them to get a little bit more sunlight and try to try to grow some so these deer use in this thicket I mean, I'm walking down an old, old trail that they've always used, and the cattle. Cattle used it too when they were in here, but they use in here real heavily. And uh, I've got a couple of cameras out in here to try to see what I can catch at a couple of the crossings that they have. So I like to check my cameras just using my phone and this little uh, SD card to uh, lightning adapter. Sometimes if I'm going to be checking a whole bunch of cameras, I'll carry my iPad with me in a backpack just so I don't overload my phone. But in this instance, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm uploading to my phone just because it's a lot more portable and compact. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to the house after a while and I will go through the uh, pictures on my phone and I'll just go through and uh, <coughs> flag the ones that I want to keep. I'll delete all the others and then I will just airdrop these pictures from my phone to my iPad, delete everything off my phone, that way I'm not taking up a whole bunch of memory on my phone. So I like to keep all my deer photos, deer videos, everything on my iPad. So just to kind of give you an idea of this setup right here, and I call it, it's not really a setup, it's just where I decided to put this camera. I used to have this camera up the hill there. Right up there on that large pine tree. Um, about 30, 35 yards away. And I was getting quite a few good pictures there, but then I, I was hunting up there one day and I noticed that I had a lot more deer crossing down here 
and I come down and looked, and there's three trails that cross right through here. You can see over here in front of me where they've just wore this out going up through there. Now, that's where they were crossing in front of that other camera, but there was another trail that goes straight down the hill into the pasture field down there, and there's another trail that goes straight out the hillside. And so I was missing getting the deer on camera that were coming out of this field or the ones that were going straight across that fence. So by putting it here at the intersection of these three trails, I'm getting three times as many pictures on this camera now. So we'll go back and look, see if we got anything good. Uh, I did have a little bit of excitement yesterday with a large group of bucks that came through up at my house. Uh, went into the food plot and uh, I'll show you some of the pictures of that uh, here in a little bit when I get to where that actually happened. So. just showed over the trail that's actually over a mineral site that I have and you know there's with it being January not as much activity on that camera at that mineral site but I expect as March April May gets here I expect that site to start picking up picking up some activity there um, <clears throat> so one thing I one of the things I didn't point out one of the reasons I do like to come around here and check these trees or check these check these trees check these cameras right now like i mentioned there's a lot of dead trees down here that were not down when i was hunting in here uh, just just a few weeks ago so um i mean i know we had some heavy winds and some a lot of storms we had some you know unseasonably warm weather come through here in late december early january and we had a lot of heavy thunderstorms with heavy winds and we we're way over our rainfall total right now i mean we're I think I heard we've had 11 inches of rain so far in the month of January. So um, you, you mix in a high rainfall amount with heavy winds and you're going to start seeing trees start coming down. So this allows me to come in, see if there's trees down over typical travel corridors. Um, but I also like to check the batteries on my trail cameras. Cold weather will just wreak havoc on batteries, especially if you're using an alkaline or rechargeable. Lithiums are a lot more, uh, you, know, uh, you know, robust. They don't, they don't really, the voltage out of those and lifetime does not really change as a function of temperature, whereas your, your alkaline batteries and your rechargeables will. So I've got one camera. I've got a, a stealth can. No, I'm sorry, it's a spy point. All my others are stealth. Uh, I've got one spy point that <clears throat> when the power meter, when the battery bar goes down below 50%, uh, it dramatically reduces the sensitivity of the sensor. So I have to keep an eye on it. So I like to just, I like to just make the rounds, check my batteries. Uh, in this case, I refreshed this mineral site just to give them something if they want to. Um, here in Tennessee, it's legal to have mineral sites. You can actually have them year-round. So, uh, so I just went ahead and did that. I'm going to move on up here and check this other camera up at my food plot and we'll see what we've got up there all right so this is the last camera I'm going to check for the day so this was the spy point I was just telling you about that I have to keep an eye on this camera actually I, don't know, I got mixed feelings about this camera this camera this camera sucks in low light locations so like in that thicket down there where I just came from it's terrible terrible i mean it's i've i've ran it with this camera beside this one of the stealth cams and the stealth cam will get 10 times as many pictures as this one will uh something about the sensitivity of the sensor i guess but if you put this camera out in a field with no where it's plenty of light i mean it, it's it's got really sharp images um it's got a blurry spot in the center i think there's maybe some fog on the on the lens or something but um but it does really good out in the open but Right now, it's overlooking my food plot and the pond here. <coughs> and so, yesterday afternoon, I was getting ready to leave to go to dinner. And I walked past my house. It's right up there. 
and I looked out my bedroom window and I saw a flash of something and I was like well what is that I got to looking and this little food plot right here this little food plot that's probably only you know uh, 20 feet by I don't know 20 feet by 80 feet 100 feet something like that it's small it was a it was a test food plot for me this year this is the first food plot really I've had up here and I looked out here and there were nine bucks in this little food plot yesterday so I actually got my DSLR and my telephoto lens out and I snuck out behind my house down into the field behind my house and took a bunch of a pic, bunch of pictures of the deer down here but I'm curious to see what we got on camera see if uh, see if the deer came in any closer so I can really analyze what all the bucks were that were down here. So have a lot of uh, a lot of hopes, high hopes for this camera. So let's see. Hey there. So I got back to the house, looked at the trail camera pictures on the phone, and uh, I have to say I'm a little surprised at the amount of uh, buck activity all of a sudden. Um, I mean, it was, I went all year last year with mostly all does, and then the rut hit, and I started getting buck pictures. And so I thought all along the bucks were bedding over on the power line on the property adjacent to me, over in the thick stuff. And, uh, and they very well could be. But I'm getting multiple bachelor groups of bucks coming through here. And, um, I mean, the, uh, I had three different instances of three different, totally different bucks. They weren't the same three just walking back and forth. It was three different bucks. Um, or three different groups of three different bucks. Let's put it that way. And then the, and then yesterday, the, uh, the big group that came through, all, all bucks. And, you know, I, I thought originally it was a few bucks and a few does. And then when I zoomed in with the, with the telephoto lens, on my camera I was able to see that there were several spikes in the mix some of them really small and then there were a couple that had probably eight or eight or nine inch long spikes so uh, pre pretty pretty positive results so far um, they're probably going to start dropping their antlers here soon so I'm glad I got what pictures I did get now to let me know that a good number of bucks have made it through this season this hunting season even with all the pressure here on the adjacent properties to mine so gives me something good to look forward to this spring and summer with uh, with upcoming food plots and mineral sites and uh, just the preparation for next hunting season so it's an adventure learn something new every time that's the big thing is just enjoy it you know enjoy experiencing all of it try to learn something new every day every time you go outside or go hunt or go for a walk or whatever so Anyway, best of luck to you, and uh, hope you have a good year. Thanks.